Hello everyone, welcome back. Hope you are doing good. Let's continue the playlist with the video in which we are going to discuss some of the important questions based on the chapter Getting Started with Python. First of all, let's look at the some of the important topics from this chapter. This chapter includes the introduction to Python and the different IDs which we can use to write the programs. By now, you must be familiar with the full form of the IDE. It is Integrated Development Environment. It is just like a notebook where you write your notes. But it is a digital notebook where you will be writing the Python programs. With this chapter, we are gonna enter the interesting and very fascinating world of programming. And I think you are very lucky because you are going to practice one of the most easiest and the popular language. Alright then, let's try to discuss some of the facts of the Python. I know you will be aware with it, but let's revise once again. Python developed by Guido Van Rossum in 1991. Whenever we hear the word Python, snake comes into our mind. No, it's not the snake. The inspiration comes from the BBC comedy show. The name of the show was Monty Python's Flying Circus. He likes this show, so he gave the name Python to the programming language. Python programming language is high level programming language. You know there are low level programming language. C is a middle level programming language and other than that all comes under the high level programming languages in which we write the programs in the form of English. The second most important feature of the programming language that it is interpreted. We are aware with the fact that computer cannot understand high level language. So we need translator to convert it to machine level language. Interpreter is nothing but a translator which converts high level language to machine level language. There is one more translator that is compiler. But compiler takes whole program at a time and converts it into a machine level language. Whereas interpreter takes it line by line which makes python little slower. What's the third feature? It is object oriented programming language. If you have studied C++ and Java, you will have the idea what is object oriented programming. It is nothing but a style to write a program. Python supports other design. Along with that, it supports object oriented programming also. Let's move ahead to the next feature. It is cross platform language. If you get separate question based on this concept, you can write the answer. It is called as cross-platform language because we can execute the program on different platforms like Windows, Linux and Mac operating system. Here is the most important feature. It is free and open source. Let's understand what does it mean. Free means you can download it without paying for it. What's the second term? Open source means what? Open source means the source code of the programming language is publicly available. You can go through it and you can also contribute to the programming language if you wish to. Alright, with that we understood some basic facts of the Python. Now we need to start writing the program. For that we need notebook to write. So that is IDE, Integrated Development Environment. You can use any one of them whichever you like. The first is IDLE. When you install Python, you will get this default IDE. Integrated Development Learning Environment. The second ID which is mentioned in your textbook is Jupyter Notebook. This is generally used for data science. And the third one is Spider. There are some more famous IDs which we can use. The first is PyCharm. And there is one more called as VS Code. Whichever you feel comfortable, you can go ahead with it. Here are some of the concepts related to Python program. You can write Python program in the interactive mode or in the script mode. This question you may get in exam. So let's try to understand the theory part. Then I will demonstrate it. If you are trying to understand any concept and writing single line of code, then you can use interactive mode. You will be writing command at the prompt and immediately it will get executed. But in case if you want to write a whole program, then you will be using script mode. You know program will contain multiple lines of code and after executing all the lines, you will get the result. Let's proceed to the next concept. The extension of the python file will be .py. 
we know with the extension we will come to know the type of file if it is a document file we write .doc if it is a excel file we write xls in the same way we will be writing .py to understand that it is a python file now i have to write the first program you know in the programming world it is a ritual to print hello world as a first program so how to print for that we have print statement so print statement is used to print the message or the value of the variable and let's remember this also that comments in the python will begin with the symbol hash comment is nothing but the additional information about the program it doesn't execute so the way you want you can write it you know this chapter is very small but you may get one mark or two mark question based on this chapter so this is the question number 1 the difference between interactive mode and the script mode which we have already discussed we can expect this type of question also where you need to write the basic features of python we are familiar with that if this is a two mark question you will be writing at least four features the first feature is it is easy to learn and use because it has a simple syntax like english The second feature is it is an interpreted language the code will get executed line by line because it has interpreter the next feature you can write that it is a cross platform language means you can run the program on different platforms like windows linux and mac operating system the next feature is it is free and open source you can download it freely without paying any charges and the source code is also available publicly here are some more features it is also an object oriented programming language and it has a lot of libraries you are familiar with some of the modules and libraries which we can use for different purpose like panda numpy matplotlib and there are many more moving ahead to the next question what are the advantages and limitations of python advantages already we have discussed these are nothing but features simple and easy to learn extensive libraries and cross platform python is so popular and widely used but it has limitations yes it is slow python is an interpreted language interpreter converts the code line by line that's why it is slower compared to other programming languages which has compiler the second limitation we can say that it consumes more memory memory consumption is more because it supports dynamic typing what is dynamic typing in python we don't mention the data type of the variable the value which we initialize to the variable decides the type of the variable it is called as dynamic typing now i am initializing 10 to i later i can change and initialize some string also along with that it is a high level language also that's why the memory consumption is more we discussed this question also what is free and open source the next question also we discussed now you can write the answer easily i feel All right let me demonstrate the different IDs first of all you will go to this website and download python generally we are using windows operating system so you can see this is the latest version of the python you can click on this button and download the python this is the default id which we will get when we install python programming language the name of this id is ideally shell now let's follow the ritual of the programming world by printing hello world for that you will be using print statement and in double quote or single quote write the message press enter you will see the output so here is the output this is called as interactive mode you are writing one line of code and immediately you can see the output of that code generally this mode we can use for practice suppose if i want to add two numbers you can see immediately i got the answer but what's the problem with this i can write only a single line of code but what if i want to write the whole program then you will be using the script mode just go to file and click on the new file with this now we are in the script mode we can write a complete program let's try to add two numbers this is the first number and second number i am taking as 10 you can take your own values now let's add these two variables and store the result in a variable the name of the variable is result now one 
plus num2 we got the addition now let's try to print it we can use print statement to print message as well as to print the value of the variable so the variable name is result you understood right when you want to write the complete program you will be using script mode the next step is to check the output for that go to run and click on run module you can use the key f5 to here we got the pop up and asking it to save so let's save the file always create a separate folder and save all the files into that folder here is the name of the file give meaningful name and the extension will be py look at that we got the output congratulations give pad to yourself we wrote the first program so that was all about interactive and the script mode if you are referring sumita arora's book there is a mention of anaconda navigator what is anaconda navigator it is a gui it is a graphical user interface in which you can launch the different ids from it look at this application you can see the different ides which are available you might be familiar with the jupiter notebook as well as spider even you can launch pycharm from here itself or install from here itself let me show you the another ide that is jupiter notebook you need to install this first then you will be redirected like this if you want to work with the jupiter notebook go to the option new and select python 3 jupiter notebook consists of cells and here are the menus with the help of that you can work with it so let's try to print hello world in the jupiter notebook hello world if you don't know the keyboard shortcuts you can use these icons now i want to run this statement click on this run button in this way we got the output you can write single statement as well as whole script in this cell now moving ahead to the third id that is spider here you have interactive mode as well as script mode this is nothing but a interactive mode let's try to print hello world in this ide2 so let me close this and press enter wow you got the output if you want to go ahead with the script mode you will be writing on the left side this is nothing but a script mode let me paste the same program which we have written in the ideally If you want to execute the program click on this button you can see here we got the output hope you got an idea of all the ides which we can use to write python program there is one more named pycharm that also you can install freely and vs code is a id which we can use for different programming languages not specific to python Let me show you how to write the comment. You can start the line with the hash symbol. Then whatever you need to write, you can write program for addition of two numbers. And it is a not executable line. It will not execute. So if I write anything randomly also, it will not give any error. Compared to ideally which is a default IDE, this looks interesting so whichever you want you can use okay let me show you these ids also the next one is pycharm you can download pycharm from this website when you click on the link you will redirect to the page from where you can download it these ids are more advanced and provides auto complete features the next one is vs code vs code is used for different programming languages you can use for all the programming languages not only for python you can use this for c++ for java you can do html css javascript anything if you are using vs code just you need to go to extension and search for python extension with this extension vs code will know about the python files and it will execute it okay then that was all about the different ids available for python programming language If you found this video helpful please click on the like button and let me know in the comments which IDE you will prefer In the next video we will discuss the important questions based on the next chapter that is Python fundamental until then keep exploring stay healthy i will see you in the next video